Hi, this is Raj from ML Sports Cars. In this video, I'm going to talk through one of the sort of crucial repairs or amendments I would make to any 981 Boxster, be it a, a base model, 2.7, an S, 3.4S, or one of these, a GTS, and that is um, removing some little valves that sit behind this air vent here, which sort of form the end of the the drainage tubes from the hood area down away from the car unfortunately they're they're prone to blocking up and i'll just show you a few that i've got which have been ta been taken off of other cars i've got a whole pile of them here and you can see they fill up with debris initially what i was doing was actually just taking off this sort of rubber um end to it but i'm now removing the whole things because they do tend to block even with removing just that that rubber piece you, it's best to just take it so that the, the end of the tube free flows now i've done this so many times now and my initial video about this which you may have seen involved jacking the car up removing the front uh front front wheel rear wheel removing the whole wheel arch liner on this side so the front side of it there and the back side of this one and then getting this whole seal off but now i've got a much quicker um, version of the video which doesn't involve even jacking the car up removing any of the wheels you just need a few tools and it takes about 20 minutes a side so just budget for that and you can do it outside you don't have to do it indoors the last one i did was indoors it was all set up nicely here i'm just going to show you. you just need basically a bit of card or something to lay on you need a box to rest this seal off, uh, seal on, because basically I'm just going to take the back edge of it off, and it will just sit there with the front still attached and the rest of it resting on a box about the same height as the car. Um, just a cloth again. To there's a part where I need to leverage um, a panel off, and it's best to have something underneath it so it doesn't damage the paintwork. Um, you need a couple of trim removal tools, so I've got two there ideally with sort of like a 90 degree hook on them. Um, you need a T27 um, screwdriver end. So there is the star shaped one and a T25. There for the, the screws that are in the, in the rear wheel arch here. And then you need sort of like an extended socket and it's a 10 mil, but it needs to have a long column um, so you can get deep enough down the shaft, the screw, sh the screw thread to get to the nut at the end which uh, holds this air vent on once you take this whole panel off so these two are the other the screwdrivers i need to do this section here so i'm just going to do that there's these are t that's a t25 that's a t25 then they're up there hopefully you'll be able to see that there's a, a t27 and then underneath here there's a t27 so i'm going to undo those first So you need a short screwdriver to get underneath the car. And that should come out quite easily. So there we go, sun's just coming out, which is nice. And the one at the top also. In my first video, I removed the tire, the, the wheel, which does make it easier to access these screws, but for ease and time, you can sort of work around the tire to get to those screws. So those those two T27s. Now I actually have an extra end to this screwdriver and that's literally to work around the edge of this tie because it's sort of in the way. So what I do is I put it in. If you had a flexible screwdriver, you can get flexible screwdrivers, it's easier to do this. Um, but this allows you to get the angle you need to get the screw off out of this wheel arch. So that's a T25, the bottom one, and the top one is also, the, sorry, the middle two that I'm doing now. So that's that T25, and then there's another T25 just here. This one's a bit easier to reach. It's normally that one that needs sort of the, the sort of funny angle where the tire is in the way of lining up. So those are out. Right, now the next stage I tend to do is actually open this. 
Now I need to basically, this is fastened on with four plastic fasteners under this GTS panel here. But to get to that, I have to, to pull this off, I have to take off some of the other bits in here. So the first stage is really to pull off the, the plastic on the inside and it's got four clips underneath and a Velcro in the, in the middle and it should just clip off. There we go. So you can see, oh, actually it's two clips, sorry. Two clips and a Velcro in the middle, which has stayed on the car. So I'll just stick that back on. So yeah, it will have, that's never come off the car as you can see. So the Velcro there and two clips. Let's carefully put that in the car, pull this rubber up and then you'll be able to lever this off. Just want to do it with a cloth. And this comes outwards. There we go. So that's held by four retainers. I'll just show you what it looks like on the car. So that's held on with these four blue ones. The inner one is held on on these areas down there and this Velcro section here. Now the, the ones I need to take out are these ones, but I don't want to damage this, this sill. So that's why I use a cloth with the, the larger trim removal tool. Those trim removal tools are available on eBay, Amazon, that kind of place. Just be aware that this this edge here has got like a black tarry substance underneath that sort of rubber trim. So that's another reason why I sort of lay that on there because otherwise you get it all over your hands. So I do normally wear gloves actually, but I haven't put any on today. So the, the thing you need to do is sort of get under here and then you just sort of wedge it up and then that pops it out. So that's one. That's the easiest way to do it. Don't use anything harder than plastic, otherwise you will scratch these panels and you'll be very annoyed if you do that. There's two. And just work away your way along. Again, moving the cloth as you go along, just so it can rest on it. Everything is quite flexible here, but like as I said, it's best to use plastic on plastic and not use metal on plastic because it will scratch or potentially dent. Just clean that dirt off there. This is areas that you don't normally get to, so if you see any dust or anything, just give it a, give it a wipe. Uh, sort of like with a panel spray or something, if you find that easier. Okay, I'm just trying to get that one out. There we go. And then finally, last one. And that one's popped right out, rolled under the car, so I'll just grab that one. So that one's out. And then, So that's the, the top edge of it removed. Now I'm gonna do the bottom. So underneath, there is just eight of these fasteners. And what you need to do, I'll show you on the video, is rotate them 90 degrees so that they're easier to take out. and then you can pop them off quite easily. Like that. So that's, a, that's what holds on the lower part of it. So.
Right, so now comes the bit you have to use a bit of brute force. And it feels horrible the first time you do it because you think you're breaking the car. But believe me, you're not. If you do it, if you put the pressure in the right way, then you won't break these panels. But basically, this is now held on with um, retaining fasteners here and along here and along here. So you just need to just pull it away. There might be a lot of dirt around it. So let's just pull here. There we go. Now, see that's now all of a sudden come come away. Now you can get the axis behind. So now, as you can see, I'm resting it on that box there. It's still attached at the front, but you've now got access to the two nuts that hold on. I mean, this car's only done 11,000 miles, so it'll be interesting to see what condition the drains are in. So that's sitting there. So. So as I said, it's a 10 mil and you need the, the extension there to get in there without touching any of the, the paintwork. There's one, and then there's one underneath as well. Right, so that's the second one. So there's only two bolts, and then they're held on with a, a little retainer at the front of them. So then you can just take that off very carefully, lay it down somewhere you're not gonna step on it. And I'll just show you what the, the issue is. So basically there's two drainage lines that come from the hood area and they have these end caps here. I can already see there's some, some stuff sticking out the, some of that out of that one. So let's pull that out and let's have a look. Oh, actually that one's not too bad. Is there anything coming out? No, that's good. And this one, actually that's good as well. So it's good to see this car's all clean. Now, this car I know has been garaged from new, so that's why there's no problems there, but I will take those out. They'll go with the car, actually, because they're as new. And this is a very low-mileage car, but um, if a car starts to be... So, say if this car was then subsequently left outside, then you would have issues with that building up in the future. So, that's why I remove them completely now. I don't leave it to chance, because someone might just leave the car on their drive, which is absolutely fine but um, I don't want them suffering having water ingress into the rest of the cabin because these are blocked up. So it backs up, and then it flows into the cabin and then you've got all the electronics for the, the hoods. If a car has bows, it also has a bows amphora on the driver's side. If they fill up with water, then it's thousands of pounds worth of damage in your car off the road. So I just remove them. I just reduce the risk basically to zero by removing those two little bits of plastic with the rubber ends on them. So now I just need to put everything back together and as you can see, so that's taken me about 10 minutes. Um, well, probably a little bit longer because I've been explaining it along the way. So put that panel back in. Put these back in. So there we go. As you can see, there's a little bit of dirt around here, so I just tend to clean that off, give it a shake. You can see there's a little bit drop in there, there's a little bit here, which I'll just clear away. There's nothing major though, a couple of cobwebs, just clear that away. Then I'm going to snap it all back into place. So there we go. carefully make sure it's all positioned where it should be 
before I push it back. And again, you have to be quite forceful. Everything should just clip back into place. Make sure the wheel arch liner is where it should be. So that's all those bits done. Um, and then you can do it any, in any order you want really. So I'll just do these screws first so they're out of the way. I'll just start putting the underside ones on. Right, so then it's the the four, four black stoppers that sit and hold the sill at the top. And the best thing is to do is to slide the um, kick plate, the sill guard, so that's in place put the inside one in as well because the rubber seal for the door sits on top there we go that's nicely in and then the last stage is just putting this rubber seal back in that should sit nice and flush so as you can see it's exactly as it was when I started, everything clipped back into place. The front of the seal is still in place. All of, and you can see, so if I pull this out, you can see this is just, just general crud that sits behind that seal there. So nothing to worry about. So I'll crack on. I'll crack on and do the other side now. Um, and hopefully there won't be anything on this side either. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you do have any questions about doing this job, um, I would highly recommend doing it at least, well, if you take the valves out, you only need to do it once. But if you want to do it every year, just clear them out, then that's absolutely fine. But I would recommend if your car's outdoors to get those valves removed. Thanks for watching.